Hi, Erin. Welcome to the Amplify Your Wealth in Your Life Summit. It's so good to have you here. Great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Oh my God, my pleasure. I Once I learned what you do, I'm like, he needs to be on the summit. <laughs> I know he's going to help a lot of people. So for those that don't know you, uh, who are you? Yeah, so um, I'm an online entrepreneur, so I work online. I work and travel at the same time. I have a little green sc sc green screen happening because I'm in a co-working space in Bulgaria, and I thought, you know, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna get a photo of actually where I am. This is Bensko in Bulgaria, so uh, this is actually what it looks like. It's really it's a really nice place, beautiful mountains, and I basically help people sell things online, digital products, whether it's coaching, membership courses, eBooks, services, templates, and so on. And I help primarily with the tech side. There's a lot of coaches. I primarily help with the, the tech side. So that's where people get hung up on what software to use, how to use it, how to automate it, how to connect the pieces. How does this digital work actually work, basically? So that's what I focus on. And uh, yeah, that's what I do. That's amazing. And I love that you get to, you said you work and you get, you get to travel and, and work, which is the yeah. best combination. I think I, I love that. So let's, let's dive right in. So when did you learn about, about funnels? Um, well, you know, it's funny. I The first time I came across a funnel, so this was late 2016, and I was yeah. scrambling around, basically. I was on the unemployment benefit, um, and I finished a long-term volunteer commitment, which I did for almost 15 years. And uh, I went to the world to go and try to make a living. I, I couldn't get a job because I didn't go to high school, so it was really hard to get a job. I just couldn't get a job interview even. But um, I noticed that a lot of people were making money on real estate. And I've also heard of uh, another business term that I was really curious about. So I was on YouTube watching videos, um, you know, about real estate and about this business niche and stuff like that. And then I came across an ad saying, you know, start an online business with no money down. And that was the ad. I thought, oh, that's what I need. So I clicked on it, clicked on the ad, um, went to the website asked me for my name and email, I entered my name and email. Then it was like, oh, congratulations, the webinar is happening at 7 p.m. tomorrow or whatever, you know? And it was like this whole, you know, live webinar experience. Um, and for somebody that has never ever heard of the term funnel, never, this was the first time I've ever entered my name and email onto a form. Really? Like, oh this my was, God. That, that's what we're talking, like we're talking about like, I mean, I've just never been to Disneyland, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and yeah, so I entered my name and email and I got immediate, I got, I remember I got an email immediately and I mean, I was like, wow, he emailed me personally. Like I really, I had no idea it's even automated. <laughs> That's how clueless I was. Right. I mean, That's I remember funny. showing up the next day to the webinar and the next day it was so funny because I was, I didn't have an, I literally, I was so broke. I mean, I was in McDonald's using their free Wi-Fi and I had an old computer. So I needed to find a McDonald's that has Wi-Fi, which a lot of them do, but has a plug to the computer next to where I'm sitting. So my computer doesn't die. And I'm trying to scramble before 7 PM for this live webinar, you know? And I remember arriving and watching this live webinar and I'm like, all getting all pumped up. And I'm like, this is amazing. You know, this is so freaking cool. I mean, you know, and that was my first experience with funnels, just not knowing I'm in a funnel, you know what I mean? And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, late, later I read the book Dot Com Secrets, which really mm -hmm. I, I learned. That I, I think I've learned about funnels after this experience, but it was only about a year and a half later that I read the book Dot Com Secrets. That I read the book, and and the penny dropped. If that makes sense, I I I, I before that the penny just did not drop. Yeah, that makes sense. Wow, that's amazing how you just like brand new to it, to it and thinking now, did you, do you really think that the webinar was live? Did you buy it? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I was positive. It's live. I'm seeing the people commenting on the side and yeah. I mean, I was, I was, I was replying to every email as well. I thought it was the polite thing to do because I didn't have an inbox. Oh, I didn't yeah. have an inbox. Yeah. I know. It's kind of funny. You know, I'm an eager beaver trying to make money online, trying to make yeah, a living. Yeah. I'm like, oh, somebody's writing to me. I mean, this is amazing. It's not like anybody's writing to me every day. Nobody writes to me, you know, like I'm a nobody. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That's, in, that's incredible. So you, re how do you come across that come secrets? Because if you were so new to funnels, was it because of, like a funnel uh, rabbit yeah. hole or how, how do you find it? So, so that, so basically with that particular story, um, I ended up, the webinar basically said make affiliate marketing with um, some sort of a company. Oh. I think my thing froze. Okay. Um, it was basically making money with affiliate marketing. And 
they said, you know, get on a, on a Zoom call, we'll help you get started. And I got on the Zoom call and it was a, st a strategy call, you know, to map up your business, blah, blah, blah. And it was a $5,000 program to teach your field of marketing. And I was like, hang on, that's not no money down, my friend, you know? Um, and then I was so eager. I told him, I says, look, if you're so confident that you could do a great job and can help me make money online, how about we do this? I'll pay you double, I'll pay you $10,000 but I do that from the profits of you helping me first up front, you know, like pro bono, you know, because I'm, I don't get no idea. You know, I, I got no idea. Yeah. I'm talking to a sales guy who's on commission. Like I've got no idea. Obviously it didn't go anywhere. And I thought, okay, must be other things like that online. So I ended up researching a bunch of things. I ended up um, ending up on a, like a network marketing, affiliate marketing company that was selling high ticket events and masterminds and courses. And honestly, they're a pyramid more than anything, you know, and that was my first year and a half online. I was just in that pyramid, basically. Um, and I came out of that. I made money with them as well, but I also lost a lot of money. So I ended up coming out of that with a $55,000 debt, which um, wow. really, really jaded me on, on the high ticket um, um, world and affiliate marketing world a bit, you know, and the online world and the scamminess of it and the BS of it. And, um, and you know, ever since, it's it's been a little bit of a mission to, help the Iran of 2016, who really doesn't know anything and help them within, within reason, not, not within, you know, with the with real intention to help Iran versus helping them so you can make a profit, which is what a lot of it felt like, you know? Um, and then because I was so broke, books was my only resort, really. So I was like starting to buy books. I was like, well, what's books on? So I bought dot com site, you know, just going on Google and finding books. And that's how I came across it, read it. And I was like, you know, this was more, better, more educational than the last year and a half in this freaking company, honestly. Like, um, and and things started to dawn on me then. And, you know, I've gotten better, obviously, ever since. But, yeah, that was kind of the point where how I came across it. And, yeah. Yeah, that is amazing. And I think I found for myself as well that the best business ideas, the, the most growth comes from disappointment, mm. from people taking your money when they know very well they cannot help you, especially when they know like you're a beginner to sell you something high ticket. They don't tell you that the program is the beginning. You have yeah. to buy the other software that of course they're also getting paid commission on, right? They don't tell you that either. Yeah. And by the end, you are spending money that you don't have. You probably don't have the intellectual maturity to deal with it overall. So even if it probably works, but not for a newbie. So it's not having that integrity to sell people their thing where they're at. Like mm -hmm. they want to sell you where they're at. And it's like, you're missing a whole bunch of steps. So I love that you found Russell because his books really break it down beginning yeah. to end, which is amazing. So you read uh, Russell's book, That Comes Secrets. What happens next? So this was um, 2018. By that stage, uh, June 2018 is when that company I told you about got, went bust and got shut down by the FTC, Federal Trade Commission wow. in the US. Yeah. Full on, it was full on. You know, overnight, it was gone, you know? And I, I'm like in 55K debt and I'm like, no income again. And I'm like, what the hell's happening? Mm -hmm. So I ended up getting a nine to five job, which I was able to get finally, because, um, you know, now I had sales experience, quote unquote. So um, a friend hooked me up with a nine to five job company and I did sales sales job for eight months. And this was around, and, and in that evenings and weekend, I just side hustled like hard, you know, drop shipping, print on demand, domain flipping, online courses, coaching. I mean, I've done a whole bunch of stuff just to try it out, really. And I made a little bit of money here and there. I mean, I made, you know, maybe a grand a month at the most, you know. So it was, it was nothing crazy, but I was making a little bit and it was gave me enough confidence that I'm going to succeed. I ended up quitting the job in February, um, basically 2019, a little bit prematurely. I was a bit cocky about it. You know, I was like, yeah, no, it's going to go well. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, it, it didn't go well, actually. And I really struggled for, I had a bit of savings. I saved up to be able to quit and have like two, three months buffer. And by August, 2018 and 19, I mean, I had no money. I had no money for rent, right? Luckily, because I got my tax return, because I had quit my job early, I got a tax return. I got it on the same day that my rent was due and I was short. Wow. It was so lucky. And that extra two grand kind of bought me an, an extra couple of months, maybe three grand bought me an extra two months of breathing room. Now, the business that I failed at was drop shipping. I tried to do drop shipping, um, you know, which is selling physical products. And I was using Shopify because um, 
I bought a website from somebody and they botched it up and I ended up just logging in and fix, fixing it myself. Um, and I was like, okay, that's not too bad. I can kind of figure it out. And then I did build it. I didn't make any money from drop shipping, but at least I built it. Um, and then I was engaging with people on Facebook groups um, around that time, o August, October, just connecting with people, which is something that Russell talked about in Expert Secrets, just engaging mm -hmm. other people's audiences, like we are now, you know, like just engaging, right? And uh, making yourself known, basically. And I came across this guy, we connected really well. And he said, hey, by the way, I have a friend who needs a Shopify store. Do you happen to know anybody? And I said, I don't, but I've just built my own. I'm willing to try. He says, okay, let me connect you up. He connected me up with his friend. And his friend said, uh, what's your experience? And you know, what, what's, your, what's your quote? And I said, look, I, I've never done this before. I've just built my own. Here's what I built for myself. If you're happy with something like that, I'm happy to do it. And he said, yeah, that looks good. Um, how much do you charge? I said, to be honest, I've got no idea. Do you have a specific budget you're trying to accommodate for? This is a very important statement, by the way. If somebody's starting online as a coach, I'm going to give you the statement again. Is there any specific budget you're trying to accommodate for? It was like a closing statement or a closing question because they say, he said $200. Now, in reality, I would have done it for free. I, I, just for the experience, I would have done it for free. And I said, $200? Freaking done. Like, done. I'll take it, you know, in my head, I'm like, this is incredible. I'm going to get paid to build somebody's website. Um, anyway, he paid me. Um, I did the job 30 hours or so. He was very happy. And then the friend that gave me the referral was like, that was good. Do you want to do it again? I said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he found another friend. This time he closed them for a thousand dollars. He did the whole conversation. Um, and he said, are you okay if we do 50, 50, 500, 500? I said, absolutely. Freaking look like. So I did that, I delivered the project, the couple that I did the work for was really happy, again, Shopify. And um, then I, because I'm from the affiliate marketing world, I knew about building a list. So I did have a list from my affiliate marketing days, like 300 email subscribers of 400. And also the fact that I gave him a $500 commission, I thought to myself, well, what if I give someone else $500 commission and they can get me a job? So I sent an email to my list and I said, if anybody knows of anybody who needs a website built, I'll give you $500 commission. The second website project that I did, the wife uh, or girlfriend, she replied to my email and said, my hairstylist in North Carolina needs a website. I was just getting my hair done today and she needs a website. And um, I thought I'll connect you two up. Is that, is that okay? I said, sure. Yeah. So I, I got on a call in the middle of the night to this hairstylist in North Carolina. Uh, and she was just so lovely. She was probably the perfect client for me at the beginning. And it was really the first sales conversation I had with somebody like that, you know? And she said, so what do you charge? And, da, da, da. and I quoted her $1,500 and she gave me a card and she paid up front. I almost fell off my chair. I was like, and that was the point I knew, okay, this is my path. I've figured out, I've got a service I can provide. I might not be great at it, but I can get better. People are willing to pay for it. It's a real problem. It's legitimate. It's got good exchange, good values. Let's freaking do it, right? And um, I paid $500 commission. Um, and then this was um, really unique because that she needed she needed a WordPress website. I didn't know WordPress, so um, I I actually won. I happened to win a giveaway of a free website um, <laughs> on someone's Instagram page, right? Um, because I knew I'm gonna win that giveaway because that particular Instagram account was a bit scammy. I knew it from the days of affiliate marketing. Like that that affiliate, that Instagram account is full of bots. And somebody was running a giveaway and I was like, I'm the only human following that account. I'm going to win this giveaway. So I won the free website. And then I got that free website to deliver to the, the, the lady, right? And the website was great. And then the guy that built the website for free, I said, look, I'll pay you. I'll, I want to pay you anyway because you did a good job. Um, but uh, on one condition. And he said, what's that? I said, I want you to sh share your screen and show me how you built it. So I paid him $250, he shared his screen and he showed me Elementor and WordPress and he explained to me how he built it. And I was like, okay. So I really paid to, for a coaching session more than anything. Yeah. Um, and then the lady, the lady, um, it's coming for a circle, but basically the, the lady that I built the website for, she, she, was, she said something that really changed everything for me. She said it when a project was done, she was really happy. She was really pleased. The website was gorgeous. You know, it was really, just really, really beautiful website. And she said, what's next? And I was like, what do you mean what's next? Like, like, like it's done. 
And she said, yeah, but what if I need to make any changes? Or like, do I come back to you? Do you edit it? Do, you, do I pay you? Like, how does it work? And I'm- Maintenance. I'm a, I'm a maintenance, <laughs> retainer, affiliate, recurring. Like, I was like, yes. my mind was blown. And I said, what if you pay me a monthly subscription and whenever you need anything, I'll make any changes. She said, okay, how much? And again, I'm like, I don't know, $25, is that okay? She said, yeah, that's fine. Free money. Free money. To this day, I think she pays me. To this day. It's been three and a half, almost four years. She still pays me and she still gets the occasional changes. Um, and for her, I mean, you know, hairstylists, I mean, you charge, you know, $400 for a blow dryer or something or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's like a lot of money. 25 bucks is, not, is nothing, you know, um, for a peace of mind, you know. But that's when I connected also funnels and affiliate marketing and website building because I realized, hang on, Shopify doesn't have a very good affiliate program. What if I find a software that has an affiliate program like ClickFunnels, like other ones like Podia or whatever, and I recommend what they use. They use my affiliate link. I give them a good rate on the building. I build it for them. And if they want maintenance, I could do that as well. But that was my model. That's when it all dawned on me. I can do affiliate marketing in an honest way, in a legitimate way. And I could tell them, look, I, I can quote you $1,500. I could also do it for a thousand, but you have to use my affiliate link because that's that's just, you know, like, you know, I'll make I'll make that money. I, I prefer that because I get the recurring, um, you know what I mean? And that was kind of the model that I built. And it evolved more and more into a, a, a way cooler business model, you know, um, but that's kind of the short answer, the, the long, longish slash shortish answer <laughs> to you know how I kind of got started, you know, and I realized yeah. that's that's the route, you know, freelancing, doing a good job, getting a referral, just good, honest, hardworking process, you know. Yeah, that is so good, and I'm glad that you actually took the longish way because it helped us get um, a um, the overview of the transformation of yeah. uh, going from the beginning. It's almost like no transformation, but you really had that. Uh, yeah. evolve from one thing yeah. to the next. So let's, since the title of this is um, yeah. Funnels in Plain English. So for those that are watching and the lady asks what's next, what is a funnel? Yeah, totally. So I'll tell you, this is probably the easiest way to explain a funnel to somebody who doesn't understand the digital word and can't get their head around it. The biggest thing I hear from people is I'm not a, I'm a visual learner. I can't get my head around it. I'm going to make it really simple. If everybody can just pause for one second and think about the last time they went grocery shopping, just the last time they went grocery shopping. They came in, they came with a trolley, they went through the aisles, they took the stuff that they wanted, and then they got to the checkout. In the checkout, they saw maybe a chocolate bar, maybe some gum, maybe, you know, little, maybe a gift card, maybe, you know, little things like that, you know. In the digital world, you might have heard of the term called order bump. An order bump, it's just a little bump at the end of a payment after somebody's about to pay and you give them something a little extra to buy. You know, get my $37 ebook or my get, get for $10, get this extra templates that, you know, whatever. You know, what, whatever it is, you everybody would have seen it, right? And if you're like, I'm not sure what you're talking about, I want you to pay attention. Next time you pay anybody online, you're going to notice that little thing a lot of the times, right? That's called an order bump. That's the gums and the chocolates in the grocery store that's all it is the the cashier the lady at the cashier or if it's automated like it is these days as well that is the order form of a funnel that's all it is right now if you think about the the um the entire all the aisles that's actually one giant sales funnel up sales down sales cross sales if you think about and, and i know this from a friend who used to work in these grocery stores and she explained to me there is a, a there's a, a like there's a strategy to how they create the aisles. Like the things at high at eye level are typically going to be more expensive because that's what people see. So they want to put the more expensive stuff at eye level. The lower stuff is going to be cheaper because the people have to put more. You know, there's there's little things like that. You know, and then they switch it around. No, yes, by ease of use, so you can find it. Okay, this is the section for blah, this is the section for blah, because you're being channeled into buying more and adding the cart and increasing the cart, right? Now, this is a classic example of a sales funnel. And nobody looks at it that way, but that's that's what it is, right? 
And once you also get the hang of it, there is really nothing yucky about it or weird about it or disgusting about it or scammy about it. It's simply a business trying to be more profitable, right? By doing things that provide a better customer experience, right? Now, when you see funnels that are yucky, we've all been there on an upsell page where you, we buy something and then they offer us something and it's like, what is this? You know, I thought I was getting that when I paid for this little thing. Now you tell me I have to pay. That's a bad, that's a bad funnel because it doesn't increase the user experience. It doesn't increase. But if somebody gives you something that's going to be more valuable, like let's just say I sell you, um, you know, a, um, a computer. Okay. Let's go to the Apple store. If, you, if I don't know if you use Apple, but I'm an Apple guy, right? Oh, it's like, yeah, if I go buy a computer, okay, then yeah, I'm going to need maybe a plastic case to cover the, the, you know, the, the screen, you know, to prevent marks and stuff like that. That's an extra 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Is it overpriced? For sure. Do you know what I mean? Let's, I'm not getting into correct pricing. I'm saying it's a logical upsell. It's a logical upgrade to the product that I just purchased, which I'm happy about. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to damage my screen. I've just invested a grand, might as well get this. You know what I mean? So if you could start looking at that that way, that's just a really good way to observe life. When you buy a mattress, you go to a mattress store, you buy a beautiful mattress, 2,000, 3,000, whatever, you're going to get a mattress cover because you want to protect it from if something spills. You're just going to do that, you know? So, you know, pillowcases, pillowcase this. Oh, would you like to buy warranty or insurance for an extra five years? You know what I mean? It just goes on and on. And that's that's all a funnel is. It's it's a, a journey that takes somebody and sells them something that's going to give them something that's going to solve a problem for them. Whatever that problem is, it could be something small, could be something big. You know, it could be something as simple as me going to, I, I don't cook, right? So for me, me going to a coffee shop, a local coffee shop, ordering, you know, a breakfast and then ordering coffee and, extra, and getting an extra drink, I'm in that restaurant's funnel and they're solving a great problem for me because I'm I'm not a cook, okay? So you know what I mean? Um, and once I adjusted my mind like that, all of a sudden things became a lot simpler to me as well because you, you think about customer experience and you think about how do you feel when you go to a good restaurant? You know, how do you feel about do you Do you care about paying extra? I don't. Do you know what I mean? No. Do you care when the, serving, the, when the service is not very good? Yeah, you do. Do you even mind giving tips if the service is great? No, you don't mind giving tips. That's a form of an upsell from that perspective. I mean, yes, the... The waitress is getting it, but still, you know what I mean? And I, I think that really helped me get clarity and simplified. And I think for those that are maybe a little bit more old fashioned or not techies or visual learners, next time you go shopping, I just want you to just open your eyes and think of a funnel desk that way. Yeah, that's so good. And I love, you said so many things. I was taking notes because it was so, so good. I <laughs> love the idea of the grocery store. I, I, am, I love grocery shopping because I am a huge cook. Okay, and I love go. eating really good, healthy food. So I'm yeah. like, oh my God, they totally get me every single time. So, but I love it. I'm there for it. Like I go, I call it fancy pants grocery shopping because yeah. I want to have a good experience and yeah. I want to get the best, the best of the best, right? So I'm paying for it, but that's okay because I'm happy to pay because that's what I'm there for. And I love the upsell. So the idea of it's a customer experience in, in selling something that is relevant. So if I buy a pencil from you, a very expensive pencil, and you have a pencil sharpener that's specific for that type of pencil, it's gonna extend the life of my pencil because it's not gonna over sharpen. Right. I'm gonna pay for it, right? But if you, if I buy a pencil from you and you want me to buy a tripod, it's like, okay, how does that go together? It doesn't. So that yeah. really connected for me. So somebody understands. So now that they know what a funnel is, why does an online entrepreneur need to have a funnel? Totally. So it, it's a really easy answer, right? Because a lot of people watching this are either existing business owners with not income or not making enough or maybe wanting to make more, or maybe they have a nine to five job, which they're trading their time for money, right? And by the way, there is nothing wrong with having a nine to five job or trading your time for money. None of that stuff. Like that, that is not to say, you know, sometimes it, there's a negative connotation to it. I don't think it's negative at all, right? So I, I, I want to just make that really clear. But the difference between having a job and having an online business is that the income that you can generate with an online business can occur separate or in addition to the time you're already trading and it's extra 
or it's on top or it replaces completely. That's the difference. And a funnel in the online world is simply you digitized. Because let's just pretend for a second that I want to sell you a coaching program because all the probably coaches watching this, right? Let's say you want to sell somebody a coaching program, right? For them to pay you, say, $3,000 for a coaching program or $1,000 or $500 or whatever, whatever the price is, doesn't really matter. There has to be an element of trust, right? Because it's not a necessity like I need toilet paper tomorrow because I'm running out and I've got, you know, three kids and, you know, that's just a necessity you have to go buy, right? It's not quite the same. So you have to present to them as to why it's a necessity. Why, why is buying that coaching program is as important as buying toilet paper tomorrow, right? Because if you, obviously it's, it's not, you need, you probably need that, you know, you need, uh, you need food on the table, you need those things more, but how can you get the, as close proximity to the value of buying food or having, paying rent or paying for the mortgage than your coaching program? How can you get that proximity? The only way to do that is by increasing value of that particular product. You do that by adding value to the person's life, explaining to them, showing them, opening their eyes, giving them analogies, giving them storytelling, things along these lines that will, will show them, yeah, I can get a transformation here, but it's going to give me not just a feeling for a good, good three hours of having a great meal, but it's going to change my life forever. You know what I mean? Whatever that transformation looks like, depending on what the business is, right? So whatever that point A and point B, that's kind of the transformation you're looking at. Now, if I was, now that I've explained to you what you have to do, if you have to do that face-to-face, -face, like if I have to talk to you, Catherine, on Zoom, one-on-one, -on -one, for however many hours until you're like, I am so ready to go and work with you around, let's just say, right? Then that's going to take a certain amount of time, maybe five hours, maybe three hours, maybe two hours, maybe maybe 20 hours, you know what I mean? Maybe you're not even on the right, maybe even if we speak for three, 20 hours, but honestly, you're not in a stage in your life when you're really ready to not even pay. Maybe you've got the money, but your focus is not there. There has been so many times where I, I want to pay for, I can pay for something, but I just don't have the headspace for it. You know, I don't have the focus for it right now because I've got other things on my plate. You know what I mean? So even if I was to talk to somebody face to face, I still might not get a sale, not because there's anything wrong in my end. Right. And the whole point of mar about marketing and having a funnel is you take it a step further is it's not just about getting somebody to the checkout. It's about adding enough value in and having them in your universe, in your ecosystem, reading your blogs, reading your content, watching your videos, listening to your podcasts, attending your summits, things like that, maybe over two years until they're like, yep, I'm ready to go. Because that way, that particular podcast conversation is not just a one-on-one -on -one conversation, it's a one-on-to-many conversation, which you can have thousands, hundreds of thousands of millions of people listen to, right? So even if right now I only have three people listening to this, that's already better value than me just doing a coaching session with you personally, as an example, because it's digitized. And that's really the difference between should you have a funnel, should you not? The question is, do you want to keep trading time for money or do you want to automate parts of your business so you can make money separate to that? That's all it is. That is so good. And I love what you said about uh, bringing them to your ecosystem because yeah. there's different types of buyers. There's some buyers like me, I'm buying. I'm going to see it. If, it's, if it resonates with me, great, I'm buying it. But that's not everybody. Most people need to see it one, two, three, six, seven times. They want yeah. to see it more than seven times, maybe four years. I bought something from someone. I've been on her email list since 2012. Since yeah. 2012, yeah. I just bought in April yeah in april so just yeah. imagine all the emails all the videos that i've gotten and it took all this time for her to have the right offer me be at the right time and actually see it for me to say yeah i'll spend that money on that right so i think that um had she tried to reach out to me personally she probably definitely would have given up but because it was automated and i was on her email list i kept getting the emails and then eventually i bought that's right so that's the process you know you gotta that's that's when we talk about funnel simplified what we just discussed really so the first portion was the grocery store analogy apple store analogy that's the payment to you know upsells downsells that's that that segment of the funnel 
now we've taken it a step back and it's a much bigger ecosystem. And to me, it's all it's all a funnel, really. We're all in a funnel 24 seven, you know what I mean? We're 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 going on YouTube to watch a YouTube video and we see some ads from KFC or something. We, you know, we're in we're in the KFC's funnel in their ecosystem in, in, in some way, you know. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So let me ask you this. Do you once your company creates the funnel, are you guys also creating the fuel? Are you helping with getting the traffic or do you just send them to some, some somewhere else? Great question. So I typically uh because there's two ways to get traffic. Uh traffic means people, first of all, it's just to find that mm -hmm. traffic is just people, right? Humans, right? Um, humans exist. It's, you don't have to get traffic. You just have to get eyeballs onto your what your thing is, right? Um, you know, because they're already looking at something. Everybody's looking at something. It's just they're not looking at you. That's all. So you just have to get their attention to look at you as opposed to someone else. That's all it is, right? So um, in terms of getting traffic, there's two ways to do it. Number one, it's free. Number one, and the second one is paid. So uh, both take time regardless, um, but the paid one can be more automated, long term can be scaled. You know, it's got different benefits. There's pros and cons to both, right? I typically recommend beginners to go the organic route, which is the free version, the free method, which is more about just engagement and networking and making yourself known. Just like if you go to a networking event, uh, you know, and you exchange business cards, you want to do that basically um, in a way that's not salesy in other people's communities, right? Um, basically. And yeah. You just want to go and meet people, you know. Hey, I'm Joe. How are you? Da da da. Whatever, and just have those conversations. Make yourself known. Um, so I don't generate the leads because the organic is the person having to do it. Typically, the paid we don't do paid. Um, I I actually pay an agency myself on my paid advertising as well, um, and that's by choice. I can learn Facebook ads. I just I think the beauty of an online business is you can pick and choose what you enjoy doing and what you enjoy yeah. enjoy. And I tried Facebook ads myself and. Although I, I can I can do it, I can learn it. I just did I really didn't enjoy doing it at it's all. Not, it's not fun. <laughs> it wasn't bringing me joy in my life. And yeah. I just thought I prefer to pay somebody to do it for me. And um that's what I that's what I do. So um yeah, so I can advise people on basics of it, uh, mm -hmm. but I also have courses specifically teaching the strategies on how I generate traffic because there's many ways to do it. I just know the ways I've done it, what's been successful. So I've got courses on how to do that. Um, yeah. That makes sense. That yeah. makes, and I love that you made the distinction versus free versus paid and that they both take time because sometimes people think I'm going to throw money at this problem. And I, we haven't talked about this, but there's a lot of testing when it comes to funnels. People think like I'm going to create this funnel and I'm never going to have to tweak it. I'm never going to have to touch it. It's going to be the same from day one till the day I die. And it's going to work every time. There is a method and there is a lot of testing. Totally. There's lots of it happening. I'm in the middle of a very intense testing on, on my Facebook ads at the moment. I don't want to dive into and explain that, but yeah. I'm in the process of really like dissecting like each piece of my landing page to figure out which headline is going to work, which image is going to work, which this. Now, as a beginner, don't even worry about it. Like, it doesn't matter. Just get it out there, have a win that you got it out there and start talking to people, making yourself known, focusing on engaging with people. That's more important. Later, you can get more advanced. And, and also the, the aspect of why I say paid ads is a little bit later is because paid ads is a little bit like putting fuel to the fire. Unless you do a bit of organic, you don't even have any fire. So you're just going to put you know, fuel onto a bunch of dead branches, you know, and nothing's going to happen from that. You know, you're just wasting money down the drain. So, you know, I, I would say make sure something is actually working organic first, free traffic strategies. Only then you can explore the, the, the paid aspect, basically. That's that's so good. It's almost like they're having that proof of concept. Like, okay, if people are actually interested, do they want this? And then, okay, do I want to automate this? And then getting the people that can help you. And I love the fact that even though you're an expert in this, you have people that are experts in other fields helping you as well. And that's something that I always wish I known at the beginning when I was trying to do all the things by myself because I could, because I'm a huge techie person. But like you said, if it's not bringing you joy, I remember I tried to build my website by myself like overnight because a friend did it, right? And I loved what he did, right? I'm like, oh, he did it, I could do it. I remember I did not go to bed. I stayed up with a friend at a co-working space. And by the end of the night, I was frustrated. I did not have a website. I had something that looked very, very homemade. And I'm like, if I added the hours that I put into this, I could have paid someone 
half of their money that I this cost me, and I would I will have the website already. So I don't do that anymore. I, I delegate as much as possible yeah. because ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's right. That is so good. So we have talked about so many things. Um, I know that you have prepared so, prepared something for yeah. those watching. What what is it? Yeah. So I have a landing page challenge checklist. It's basically a checklist that will take you from A to Z on sending the initial process of your funnel at the beginning for what anybody needs to have, which is building an email list, basically. So it's a checklist that will walk you through setting up the landing page, which is where people enter their name and email, and where you offer a free PDF or a free ebook or free video, whatever it is. And then they go to a thank you page, which typically you will say, thank you so much. Your PDF or whatever has been sent to your email address, uh, to your email inbox, please check it out now. And you know, there is, I, I recommend people do video. So I've got a training on how to do a thank you video really nicely. Like there's three types of thank you videos. So the three types of thank you videos and how to do it. And also there's a bonus section there on what's my favorite type of thank you video for somebody who's just getting started and hasn't had any clients basically. So um, basically the check is gonna walk you through each part. So the landing page, the thank you page, the lead magnet, the email sequence, the first few emails that you're gonna send. So it's got a checklist on what to do on each part and also a video tutorial on each segment and how to do it as well. And um, oh some, some templates as well. That is fantastic. So we have that link. We're gonna make sure that we put it on your, on this page so they can actually uh, download it. That is super generous of you. Thank you so much for that. Sure. Uh, where are you hanging out these days on social media? So I typically am um, on, found on YouTube is probably you know where I, I post the most because um, I have a tech membership where people ask me questions, tech questions, and I answer them in videos. So I just answer a lot of them on YouTube. Um, also Instagram, I do hang out there. I honestly, I don't get a lot of clients. Like, again, this is something that's really, you were talking, we're talking about traffic, right? Like, yeah. um, it's also important to know, like, sometimes you just want to test, right? Like I can tell you right now, for me, Instagram is really not a big lead gen at all whatsoever, but I do kind of enjoy being there. You know, the things that I like, people that I like, I like to keep in touch with people there. So Instagram is a good place to come and say hi, you know, just connect on a personal level, see where I, you know, see where I hang out. I mean, I'm in Bensko right now, which is the, the picture you're seeing behind me. Um, mm -hmm. Next week I will be in Sofia in Bulgaria. And after that, I've got no idea. I might be in Spain, I might be in Latvia. I haven't decided yet. So, um, you know, <laughs> so, you know, that's what, kind of where I share my travels and stuff. And then yeah. Facebook as well, or email me, you know? So um, I'm, I'm really flexible on all platforms. I'm very responsive. So whatever you're comfortable with, Instagram, Facebook, my email or YouTube, I answer. That is so good. I want to thank you for your time. I know you're very busy and you're enjoying the world as we can <laughs> see. So thank you so, for making the time and for putting together such a thoughtful and so needed um, gift for our audience. Because I know uh, getting started is different. It's just something that is foreign to people. If they don't feel like comfortable with funnels, I think this is a perfect beginning. Like we said, everybody needs a landing page. So uh, I want to thank you for that. My pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Anything else that you want to share with us before we say goodbye? Um, no, I mean, look, I, I think um, it, the most important part for me is not people listening to this, is then doing something about it, right? Like whether you're going to end up in my ecosystem on someone else's, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. What matters is you do something with this and take action and implement because that's where you're going to get results. You can listen to a million summits and podcasts and interviews and YouTube videos and all that till you actually get your hands dirty nothing's going to happen. So, you know, if there's anything that I really want you to take away is really just give it a try, you know, try things out. That's the best way to learn, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, if anything I can do to serve, to help you speed up that journey, I'm, I'm always here to serve you. Yeah. That is so good. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time here. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Guys, there you have it. You have all you need to get started with your funnel. If you have any questions, I want to see you in the comments. See you soon.